Get out the insurance cards, get out the co-pays. The office is open, my friends. Brought to you by DrRoto.com. What is up, fellow breadheads? It's your boy, Mike Holland, at MC Holland 34 over on X, bringing you a live before lock show, kind of last minute here for this Sunday NCAA tournament slate. So, hope everyone's had a good weekend. I have watched way too much college basketball in the last two weeks. I was going to take a nap, but you know what? Eric was like, why don't we just, uh, why don't we give the people some breadcrumbs here? And I said, I'm down for it. I just got off a radio spot and uh, I'm fully dialed into this one. It's been an interesting weekend. Uh, yesterday, had a chance to have a really big night, but Creighton and Oregon going into double overtime uh, really crushed my dreams for a very profitable uh, night. So looking to bounce back from that, uh, I got a couple of, actually got three of my 10 survivors uh, in, so already guaranteed some money for today. And yes, we have an eight game slate. We got 20K to first again. Really tough to win these tournaments with 4,000 to 5,000 people. So the goal is here in the next 30 to 40 minutes, get you guys the information you need to get your lineups built. And looks like we got some comments coming through already. Mama Rocks hitting us up with the morning, y'all. Morning, Mama Rocks. We got BD816 saying, let's ride. And Tony A coming through, let's roll. Myron Kid saying, yeah, Cuisinart saved my butt. Well, you know, Cuisinart, Dante, the Creighton guys, they uh, they ruined my night. So I'm a little bitter on that, but my pick is still Creighton to win the national championship, so I was glad that kind of happened. But uh was not feeling it last night after watching all of my profits go by the wayside. But that's how it goes in DFS. Uh, you know, <laughs> just is what it is. So we got uh, yeah, we got the eight games on the slate. Unfortunately, as an overview, the last two that uh, games really stick out um, as a uh, as kind of some weird like contrarian type uh, tournament options to finish out the night. So not not a lot of interest in the A and M Houston game or the Yale San Diego State game. But we'll talk about those. Mostly, what we're going to want to talk about is Colorado Marquette and Grand Canyon Alabama, as those should be. Uh, very fun games, not only to watch, but for DFS purposes. Got a few more people rolling in saying Mikey B, Roll Jays, and Forklift Jeremy coming through with the fire emojis and the uh, the old corazon there. So, um, yeah, let's jump into it. As far as uh, DFS core four, this is kind of last minute. Don't really have like a, a, a core, but I'm going to give you some guys that kind of stand out. Uh, Ty and Grant Foster, I mean, an 8,400 and a peso spot against Alabama. Uh, Tyler Kolick is just way too cheap. Zach Eady, even though there's not a ton of value, like we know he has 70, 60 fantasy point upside in the mid-tier. Gay McLaughlin and Ray Harrison from Grand Canyon, just too cheap for what they can do. Uh, Mark Mitchell is also way too cheap. In the low-tier, Jalen Carey and uh, Raekwon Horton from James Madison. They're not going to play very many minutes, but uh, they – really can get you into the to the teens uh, for their price tag. So you don't mind them. Isaac Johnson's kind of interesting and Luke Hunger as well down there in the low tier. So uh, mix and match those guys, but we'll go game by game, um, break these guys, break these games down for you so you can get a better idea of what to do here. So uh, before we start, just make sure you like and subscribe. We appreciate uh, everyone joining us for this uh, ride that we've been on this year. It's been a lot of fun. Um, you know, we, we still got more shows coming. Uh, we got, obviously, more tournament games coming on next weekend, so we'll be looking forward to doing that. But having said that, make sure you hit those like and subscribe buttons, and let's get started. As Myron pops in here saying Grand Canyon is going to be the chalky nuts today. Yeah, absolutely. They're way too cheap. So we'll get to that game here in just a minute. Starting off, we got Colorado plus two uh, playing Marquette here, 150-point total. I went on national radio just a minute ago on channel 87 with Dr. Roto saying that Colorado is going to win this game. One, Shaka Smart has this monkey on his back with the second round. Um, two, Colorado's on fire right now. If you've been watching these teams that are playing really well down the stretch here, they are continuing to do that. Oregon barely losing to Creighton. NC State, uh, you know, staying hot. They've won like seven games in like 11 days, which is absurd. And Colorado's surging as well. Uh, they got bounced, obviously, in the – uh, in the Pac-12 tourney, but before that, they'd won, I think, 9 out of 10 or something like that. So, uh, yeah, this is going to be a really fun game. Uh, on the Colorado side, 
Uh, KJ Simpson is going to be kind of tough to get to. So a contrarian tournament type play. He's 9,000. He has 40 fantasy point upside. Uh, love his PRA. I think it's 30 and a half with the demon on uh, on prize pick. So at 9K, uh, you can certainly look to KJ Simpson. I think if I'm spinning up, though, there's just better options uh, that are there. So, you know, as far as how many lineups I'm going to get him into, it's probably only going to be a couple uh, more interested. And, and actually, really, the, the big six, right? Like the six guys that play all the minutes are really in play for Colorado here. Uh, Marquette plays really fast. It's going to be an up and down game. I like the over in this game. Uh, Tristan Silva sitting there at 7,100. He's okay for cash. His, you know, his price came up about 300 bucks. The ceiling games, like they just haven't really been there, uh, especially with Eddie Lampkin coming on. He just, you know, he's kind of relegated to to kind of a cash type play for me. Uh, Eddie Lampkin, an awesome tournament play. I mean, this guy at 6,200, he's been going off. Put up a 37 last game against that uh, poor Florida front line. Now we know Osto's played a little bit better this year up front. But Oso's still giving up some big games uh, to bigs this year. So at 6,200, Eddie Lampkin, uh, you know, very good tournament play. Javon Hadley sitting here at 6.2. I uh, I definitely like him. He's a, you know, kind of got an all-around type game. Um, you know, him and Lampkin are in my first build that I created today uh, just to get into this game. So it's kind of tough to get to Simpson. Kristen De Silva sitting there at 7,100. Um, just not, it's not going to win you 20 grand, I don't think. Now, every now and then he'll pop off for a 40. So I definitely like Javon Hadley. Give me a second here, guys. All right. So that uh, kind of wraps it up. I mean, if you want to play take shots on Cody Williams to win 20 grand, I, I can see that. If you want to take a shot at Luke O'Brien, you know, they're cheaper guys. I can understand that. Really, for me, it's Lampkin, Hadley, um, and then I'll be using Simpson in a few lineups for tournaments. I'll be using the Silva in cash games. Over on the Marquette side, Tyler Cole looks way too cheap. Um, he has you know, five to five and a half X upside in this spot. I mean, Colorado, just, they give up a lot of fantasy points. So he's coming off the 47 spot. He's clearly healthy. This game should stay close throughout. Should come down to the final couple of possessions here. So Tyler Kolick, a no-brainer, a lock for core at 8,100. Should be mega chalky, which means Cam Jones probably not going to be owned at all at 8,000. He's been scoring a lot lately. Um, you know, he put up 36 last game, but this is you know tougher defense than Western Kentucky, uh, even though they still give up a ton of fantasy points. Cam Jones, to me, is just okay. I just, you know, shot dependent. I don't play him a lot, especially when he gets over, like, the 7K mark and he's up here at 8,000. Um, I would rather spend $500 down and go to Oso at 7,500. Now, Oso's kind of been meh, like, recently. I mean, he hasn't really done much. But that means no one's going to click the click the box, or click his name, um, stick him in your lineup. So I really like Oso here at 7,500. feels like he has 30 to 40 fantasy point upside. We have seen... Uh, centers gobble up fantasy points against Eddie Lampkin. So it feels like if you want to win 20K, either, whichever guy really takes advantage of their matchup between Lampkin and, and Iguodaro uh, could really be the difference and, and be a slate winner for you. So uh, outside of that, I mean, Marquette, it's pretty much relegated to those the big three with them. Everyone else is just kind of just okay. C.B. Mitchell's, I mean, I, I'm just not going to get to him, but I can understand if you wanted to. So We'll move on to the uh, Utah State plus nine versus Purdue. 153 point total. Uh, I think this is going to be a fun game. Um, I do think Purdue is going to wear them down in the second half, but I see this one as being a fun game. Great Osabor from uh, Utah State. Obviously been fantastic this year. I uh, can't like any of the any of the forward options here for Utah State, um, at least not as much as you would like going against a Purdue matchup where Zach Eady draws. Basically a million fouls, and NTA refs just don't know how to ref this guy, so they call every foul. So great Esabor at 8,700. He's guard for eligible for whatever reason. But I just don't see ceiling games with, uh, with front court players against uh, against Purdue. So Darius Brown, probably my, probably my second favorite play on this team, Price adjusted. He's been great this year. Uh, you know, he's going to have the ball in his hands a ton. He's going to take a ton of shots. Feels like he has a baseline of 30 fantasy points. We're not playing him in cash. I think that that's probably a mistake. Uh, you know, it, tournaments, like I could understand, like Purdue is definitely, uh, I mean, they're not a defensive juggernaut, but they're pretty, pretty solid. 
You got Ian Martinez here. I would say probably my favorite price of just to play at 5,800. He's uh, put up 37 fantasy points in the last game here. So definitely don't mind Ian Martinez. Uh, he takes a lot of shots. Um, the periphery is just, I mean, peripherals aren't there as much as you would like. But recently he's done a little bit of damage in that area. So you definitely don't mind him. Uh, Mason Falsev at 5,300. His role's kind of been reduced. Um, so I don't have much interest in him. I think he's a contrarian tournament option on the big field if you think this game stays close. But overall, I mean, I'd rather pay the $500 just to go up to Martinez. I think the most interesting play uh, on this side, and it's probably not going to work out because of Zach Eady, but Johnson here at uh, 4500 Mike, it's um, – it's an intriguing spot, I guess. I mean, played really well in my first game. Man, 4,500, absolutely. So, <clears throat> these are guys battling through some allergies here. But Isaac Johnson is in the player pool, secondary, um, a secondary option as far as I'm concerned. I just, I just, you just can't, it's hard to click the name, right? Like, I want to click his name because. Most of the value I'm playing is on the James Madison side, which we'll talk about here in just a second. But I'm trying to find ways to get away from those guys. And it's just you want to, you know, you want to get Zach Eady in at some point. But it's just one of those slates like the other day. If you play Zach Eady, you're gonna find yourself playing a guy that scores seven to eight fantasy points, and you're probably not going to win a tournament. Um so you know, Isaac Johnson can shoot threes, uh, a big body there. I don't, you know, I don't think the stock ability is really going to be there for him. He had four blocks in the last game. He's just now recently playing bigger minutes. So if you want to take a shot, I, I absolutely don't mind it. But, uh, yeah, I think I'm more interested in Ian Martinez as well as Darius Brown from the Utah State side. Over on Purdue, I mean, Zach Eady, I don't need to tell you, like, why to play him. Um, we usually come on here and tell you, flip a coin. I don't think you can really flip a coin because the value is so tough on this slate. So if you're playing mass multi 20%, 25%, um, he's probably going to come in. I think last slate he was, you know, 12 to 15%. It's just tough to pay that price tag, even though, you know, you're probably going to get a huge number out of him. If you don't play him, I think you should play Braden Smith. He's been excellent. Uh, looks fully healthy again, put up 37 in that first game against Grambling. 7,600, it feels like he'll be unowned with some of the guys that are around him, especially Tyler Kolick's only $500, $500 more. You've got the cheap guards from Grand Canyon. It feels like Brandon Smith's going to go pretty uh, pretty overlooked here, which, uh, you know, he's got 40 fantasy point upside, so maybe a sneaky play in tournaments. Lance Jones, he's just okay. Fletcher Lawyer, like these guys are just okay. Um, mostly interested in trying to figure out a way to get to Zach Eady, and then – Trying to get in with some some Braden Smith action so you can get a hold of uh you know some some 40 point upside here for sure. So uh that's the first couple of games right here. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. Uh Myron's jumping in here saying uh hope Colorado wins. Want to get that Burns Lampkin matchup. Everybody's yeah, everything on Twitter is saying the third's gonna explode uh with that matchup, which is <laughs> it's pretty hilarious. But um let's move on to the next game. Got about uh, about a 20 minutes or so here, so we'll speed up a little bit here. James Madison plus eight versus Duke. 150 implied total here. You know, James Madison, 63rd in tempo. Uh, Duke, you know, 236. So a pace up spot for the Duke side, but for uh, for for Duke's side, not the Dukes. Uh, James Madison, the Dukes here. Price tags are, uh, are okay for their top guys. I mean, Terrence Edwards, 7K. Cashy, right? He's gonna play play all the minutes. Gonna take a ton of shots. I don't know that he has the tournament upside unless he just goes nuclear against Duke, and I just I don't see that happening. So limiting my exposure to him in tournaments. Bickerstaff kind of the same. He's priced correctly at sixty three hundred. Like the the excitement on these top guys, it's I'm a little tampered here. I mean, especially with the front court guys. I mean, Duke, uh, you know, Duke's a tougher front line. Noah Friedel, he's now priced. You know, pretty solidly at 5,800. Uh, he didn't do much in that last game, but he did enough at 5,400. He's got to get up to the 25 and 30, you know, pieces to to actually pay this price off. So probably staying away from the top guys on James Madison. More interested in the uh, cheapies. 
you got Julian Wooden playing a little more minutes than what we're used to. They play a large rotation. So uh, it's, you know, it's kind of annoying sometimes uh, when you play these, like, when you play these secondary pieces with them because you just don't know if they're even going to get 20 minutes. But Julian Wooden, he starts. He's 4,700, coming off the 24 piece. He'll be in my player pool as a secondary value type option. Uh, Raekwon Horton and Jalen Carey. Those are the guys I'm most interested in, but those are the guys that carry the most risk. So for tournaments only, Raekwon Horton, man, I should have played him last slate. I really thought about it. Um, ended up just kind of fading these, uh, you know, these James Madison cheapies. And of course, Horton goes off for 23 fantasy points. Jalen Carey at 3,600 goes off for 14 fantasy points. He's been 10 fantasy points or more at 3,600 in the last five games. Could, could he get a little more run with foul trouble, bigger staff, things like that? Absolutely, because Duke has Mark Mitchell and Kyle Filipowski. So, I mean, if this guy gets 20 minutes, like, he's absolutely going to gonna gonna do some damage here at 3,600. And if we can get a 14 out of him and he plays Zach Eady and he goes for 60, like, that's a good combination, but you'll have to live through the mid-tier for the rest of your six players. Uh, so interest on, on Wooden, Horton, and Carey. Really cash interest in Edwards, bigger staff. I don't think I'm going to play Noah Friedel on this one. So flipping over to the Duke side, I mean, Filipowski's, you know, 8,500. Like, he's a 9K player. He always has that 50-point upside. We saw that a couple of games ago. I mean, three games ago, he had 46. So uh, he's just a dog. I just, I man, when I see that and then I look down at Mark Mitchell's price tag at 6,100, like, to save $2,400, and Mark Mitchell is a guy that, you know, he's kind of rebound dependent. Um so he's going to have to double double, but I mean, we've seen him put 35s. We've seen him put high thirties before at 6,100. Like, I feel like you just have to play him in cash because he's going to play huge minutes. There's no Caleb Foster for this team. They're going to have to play their top five guys. Jalen Blakes is only going to play a few minutes for them off the bench. Ryan Young's only going to play a few minutes off the bench. If Mark Mitchell's just going to play 35 minutes, like you have to play him in cash. Um, at 6100 like he's tournament viable and one of my one of my favorite tournament options especially coming off of Filipowski's price tag but really I'm in love with all five duke starters as a pace up spot Jared McCain is 6800 we know he's a flamethrower can really shoot the three uh because they these guys play so many minutes they're going to have rebounding and assist upside um, from the guards here even though it's a little spread out between McCain Roach and Proctor McCain though I, I think he probably has the highest ceiling uh of him Roach and Proctor so definitely a guy that I'm looking to get to. I am finding myself stacking one of the three guards with Mark Mitchell in a lot of tournament lineups. Um, first one, I uh, went ahead and got Roach with Mitchell. Uh, second one, I got in there with McCain and Mitchell, and I have one with Proctor and Mitchell. I'm going to be playing around. The, um, the, they're kind of a core core team to stack around because they're playing so many minutes in this pace up spot. Jeremy Roach coming off the 29. Uh, you know, he's he was really wishing we'd get him, you know, 62 61 right uh but here he is 6400 i mean 30 to 32 is, is kind of his ceiling uh but you know he rarely comes off the floor um i definitely i just said i have interest stacking him with mark mitchell and the tigers proctor's 100 dollars discount probably the lowest owned of these guys uh because he hasn't done much recently which makes me really like him because we know his upside we know he's an nba uh athlete if you just knock down some shots man like it feels like you could absolutely explode. He's taking a ton of shots too. So you love that 30 shot attempts in the last two games. Um, you expect him to get some assists. He didn't have any against Vermont, which was kind of surprising. He will do some rebounding. Hasn't done much as far as getting stocks, but you know, maybe trip over a stock here or there with uh with the pace up spot here from uh James Madison. So absolutely love the side from Duke. Get at least two of these guys in your lineup. Uh, James Madison run back with the cheapie, and you have all kinds of salary. So We'll move on here. Clemson plus two against Baylor, 148 implied total. Baylor's offense is awesome. Their defense, a big 12 play, uh, not what it used to be. Uh, Clemson, kind of the same thing, like really good offensively, defensively in ACC play. Like, I mean, these are guys that you could attack. The tempos aren't great in this game, which is why I'm kind of surprised we're seeing the 148 total. That's probably because they don't, neither team plays efficient defense, uh, at least against stronger competition, and they're very good offensively. So we'll start with Clemson. I mean, here we go again with P.J. Hall. Like, it's just been so frustrating. He's 7,600. We know his upside. I don't know why he's not rebounding. I know Shiflin's there, and he takes a lot of rebounds. But, like, you'll see P.J. Hall, like, score nine points in the first, like, ten minutes of the game, and then he doesn't have any other stats. And you're like, what is happening? 
at this price tag, you need him to rebound. His rebounding has just plummeted over the last few games. If he's going to get seven, eight, nine, ten boards, he's going to smash this slate because he knows he's going to score. He's going to score at least 15 to, you know, 16 points in this game. So tournaments only, though, man, because if he's not rebounding and if he's just kind of there just shooting the ball, I mean, he's going to he's gonna tank your lineup if he's you know going to put up a, a 26. So uh, P.J. Hall at 7,600 for tournaments only. Shifflin, I don't have too much interest in. Uh, I'm looking more towards Gerard. Uh, just because he has that boom bust potential. Uh, now we saw the bust in the last game, but we know he has 30 plus fantasy upside if he's knocking down his threes. So tournaments only for Joe Girard for me. Chase Hunter, um, I always think about clicking his name, and most of the time I don't click his name because we've seen how bad he can be. I mean, you're talking Girard boom bust. Like this is a guy that can get single digit fantasy points, or he can drop a 35 to 40 on your head um, just randomly. So I, both guards are in play for me against the Baylor squad that, that gives it up. Um, they're, they're not great defensively with Walter and Dennis. Those are more offensive-minded players. So definitely sneaky guys to get in there. I'm definitely looking to get one of those guys. And I wouldn't say all my lineups, but most of the lineups that I'm building. Jack Clark sitting here had a good game. You know, he he's up and down as well. Uh, the thing with, with Clemson is you kind of got to spin the wheel on these guys. Like who's going to have the big game? You know, last game it was, you know, Shifflin had the okay 4X game, and then Clark had the 5X game. Um, you know, the game before that, uh, Chase Hunter exploded, obviously. Uh, you know, at times it's P.J. Hall exploding. Um, you just you just don't know. Um, but I know that I want to get uh, to some of the guards, especially uh, Hunter and Gerard. Uh, flipping over to the Baylor side, Jalen Bridges at 7,400, a guy that has rebounding ability, shoots a lot of threes, plays the entire game. He's, uh, he's pretty solid here. I think I like him more for cash. I don't know how often I'm going to get to him in tournaments. I think I'm reserving tournaments for uh, uh, for guys that are a little bit cheaper in this spot. If you want to go ahead and do that, I, I, I don't mind it. Ray J. Dennis, also a cash type play. Um, you kind of know what you're going to get from him, right? It's, it's not going to be super exciting. He's not going to put up a 40 on you because Walter and Nunn take so many shots. Uh, but Ray J. Dennis at 7,300, another good cash play. Jacoby Walter, um, I would say a great cash play at 6,100. Like, you know, you're probably going to get your 25, 26 fantasy points. Very rarely does he, you know, go up and get you a 30 plus fantasy points. So, you know, for the Baylor side, I'm, I'm kind of staying away. Uh, Misi uh, is probably the one guy in tournaments that I would play. Um, he's got the uh, he's got the questionable tag, back tightness in the last game. But this guy has 30, 40 fantasy point upside with his rebounding ability and his shot blocking ability. Um, I'll sprinkle him in uh, a tournament lineup, maybe two, just to see, uh, you know, if he's able to reach back and get that ceiling. Jaden Nunn, uh, another cashier type play, although, you know, he had a really good game first time out. Um, very shot dependent, so a little nervous about that. But, you know, his ceiling's, you know, in the high 20s for Jaden Nunn. So I think he's a better option than Dennis Bridges and, and Walter for tournaments. Um, one, obviously, you're getting the cheaper price tag, but two, because he flashes kind of what ceilings you see from Dennis and Walter are now. Now Bridges has an opportunity to go up and get you know high thirties or into the forties. I just don't really like him banging up against PJ Hall and uh, Ian Shifflin on the other side. So Ola uh, Juana is forty four hundred, uh, just kind of more of a mention piece, a tertiary uh, value piece at forty four hundred. If Misi's out, I think we got to go directly to him. So we'll pay attention to the news. I don't think Misi's going to be out. He's just dealing with back tightness. But if we got word that, you know, Misi is going to sit this one, uh, then he becomes a, like a core value type play. So just something of note here. And, uh, yeah, we'll move on to some comments here that will wrap up the Baylor game. Uh, going out on a limb, Wolf is going off today. Well, if Wolf goes off, Anthony, and you have him in the hammer, uh, you are probably – and he goes off, you're going to make yourself a lot of money there, assuming you get all the other pieces right. So – uh, good luck on that. It's kind of those two games at the end are very ugly. <laughs> Mama Rocks, Yellow Joe. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's Yellow Clemson at this point. Like, there's just like no one that you can confidently say, can say we'll get to 4X. Uh, it's just kind of a mess right now. So, uh, moving on to the most exciting game in real life purposes and for fantasy purposes. I mean, Grand Canyon plus five against Alabama, 167 implied total. We know Alabama plays at a very fast pace. Grand Canyon uh, will. Uh, 
will really consolidate their uh, their minutes to you know six to seven guys, and it's really the star power that is uh, underpriced here. Even Tyon Grant Foster at eighty four hundred. He's, uh, he's too cheap for his upside in this spot. I mean, he has 50 fantasy point upside in this spot uh, at 8,400, which is why KJ Simpson's probably not going to be owned because Grant Foster sitting here at 8,400. You have Kolick at 8,100. Um, yeah, I'm going to get to him. Uh, you know, like the projections, I'm sure he's just absolutely popping all over the place because of his usage rate, uh, ability to rebound and hand out some dimes, um, ability to get stocks. Like he's just a phenomenal play if you can get all the way up to the 8,400 for him. I'm more interested in getting more exposure to Ray Harrison at 5,900. Uh, that's just too cheap for for what he can do and his role in this offense. I mean, this is, you know, he's uh, the the one B um, to, to Grant Foster. Uh, 31 in the first matchup or first game against St. Mary's, which is a very, very slow team. What happens when you put him with a team that wants to run up and down? I mean, that's 35 to 40 written all over Ray Harrison at 5,900, who's probably going to be mega chalk along with Gabe McLaughlin at 5,700. Uh, he's coming off the 40 piece. Like, here we go. Now he's 5,700. Um, I'm a little more cautious on him just because Alabama front line is deep. Um, and they're also talented. Grant Nelson's there. You know, Pringle uh, can draw some fouls. But for the price tag, like, these guys are all way too cheap. Um, way too cheap for these top three guys. Even for Grant Foster, 8,400, he should be 9K or above. Harrison should probably be 7K. McLaughlin should be 6,800 to 7K. All these guys way too cheap, but they're all going to be mega chalk, like Myron said earlier. Uh, using the secondary pieces, like Loke War, he's 5,500. Uh, he's kind of interesting, just, you know, a fantasy per minute type player. It's just hard to pay 5,500 for him when you have McLaughlin and Harrison there for you know, two hundred and four hundred dollar difference. So, if you want to get different, um, or if you want to add him as like a third stacking piece, I definitely don't mind that. Colin Moore is in the same situation at forty eight hundred. Another stacking piece. If you want to play Harrison and McLaughlin, and you want to play more, you want to play Grant Foster and McLaughlin and Colin Moore. I don't mind it. Uh, forty eight hundred in a pace up spot. Like, sign me up. I'm I'm all over this Grand Canyon team, especially since I picked them to go to the Sweet Sixteen. Um, really like them for the spot here. Blackshear, I don't think we could play him at 4,600. If he was, if he was 4,000, I would take some shots on him. He's just not the same player he was a few years ago when he was the WAC Player of the Year and then preseason Player of the Year uh, heading into last year. Just too many injuries. Um, I think he's a key piece to them, um, you know, beating Alabama. I just don't know that he's going to put up the the stat line to really reflect it. So, uh, flipping over to the Alabama side, Mark Sears, he's 8,800. Him and Aaron Estrada at 8,200. You just kind of flip a coin. Uh, you know, Sears is shot dependent more recently. Um, we've seen him, ha- you know, take 15 to 20 shots. Hasn't done as much as far as the peripherals as uh, and counting stats as Aaron Estrada, who's 8,200. I like both of them. Um, one of them is going to have a very, very good game. So either Sears or Estrada here. Uh, Grant Nelson, 6,400. Like, yuck. It's just kind of. It's just tournament optionally. We know he has 40 fantasy point upside. We've been burned so many times by Grant Nelson that if you got a lineup or two, you just yellow in it, then uh, definitely don't mind it. Latrell Reitzel is kind of interesting at 6,100. So, uh, yeah, that pretty much wraps up the Bama Grand Canyon game. Uh, make sure you guys like and subscribe to our one and done CBB. Uh, you know, we're, we're doing all kinds of things here, man. We're, uh, we've been pumping through so much content. Uh, your boys are tired, but we're, we're still grinding through it. And then, look, we have the transfer portal to look forward to. I think my list is up to like 112 players, but there's already like 700 in the portal. So working on that on the back end. So make sure you check us out, TikTok. Um, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel here at Get Green Screens. Uh, moving over to these last couple of games here, uh, these last three. Like, these are not great games. So we're going to run through these real quickly. Northwestern plus 19 <coughs> on Ken Palm. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, against UConn here, 140 point total. Both teams super slow um, in the bottom 30, uh, bottom 40 in pace are both teams. So not a lot to like here. I think if I call out one uh, one guy, uh, maybe two guys on the Northwestern side, Boo Boo, he's always in play. He always seems to step up in these, um, you know, these, uh, these games, especially against like Purdue. Um, you just see him kind of do his thing, right? Uh, I don't think I'm going to get to him at all. Definitely a very, very contrarian tournament option. 
Uh, Langborn's okay. Barnhage is okay. Like they play a lot of minutes, but their prices are cre creeping up. I just think I'm more interested in Luke Hunger at 3,800, even though he's got a tough matchup against Klingon. I mean, he played a pile of minutes. He's very frustrating um, to roster. I uh, didn't even make it. He made one shot. Yeah, he made one shot. Uh, yeah, one for eight. There you go. 23 fantasy points. Um, obviously, a little bit softer matchup against FAU. Now playing UConn, it's it's not great. Um, so really, it's just exposure to, to maybe hunger on this team. On the UConn side, I mean, look, like the, the big five are always in play. They're starting five. I think if I had to pick someone, it's probably Donovan Klingon. He's 7,700. He's got 50 fantasy point upside. Uh, they don't really have anybody that can guard him. If somehow Bowie and Barnheiser can keep this thing close, uh, Donovan Klingon's going to absolutely smash this spot. So uh, a court type play if you think the game stays close, but this game is probably not going to stay close. So be careful with Klingon, a tournament option only for the UConn side. Newton, Spencer, Caravan, Castle, their prices pretty much right on point. They'll probably go three and a half to 4X for sure. So that'll wrap that game up. We've got some comments here. Uh, we got Anthony saying Foster 8K on Fandle. Wolf is 7,700. Grant Nelson, <laughs> Jay jumping in here. The conductor, Grant Nelson's burned him so many times. Same here. Tommy Kramer, first or second degree. <laughs> um, you guys keep the keep the chat rolling here. Got about five minutes to, uh, to wrap this thing up here. Here we go, Aggies and Cougars. Uh, 132 total. Not great. The Aggie side, I mean, I don't play guys against uh, against Houston's defense. So Wade Taylor and Tyrese Rapper, we've been using a ton of them because they've been about $500 underpriced. Well, they are uh, about $500 overpriced, at least on this one for me. Uh, ugly implied total for Texas A&M. Uh, I, don't, I don't see a reason why you need to go to these guys with all the guys that we profiled earlier. Uh, Grant Foster, you know, Colix 8,100. I don't know why you would pay the 7,800, 7,500 for him and Radford. I'm not, a, I'm not, a, I'm not, I mean, I am an Aggie hater because I'm a Longhorn, but, uh, you know, it's just a spot. Like everyone knows, just don't play teams against uh, Houston or Iowa State. On the Houston side, I think Jamal Shedd's interesting at 7,700. Um, you know, it feels like this game, if Aggies can keep this game a little bit tighter, uh, Jamal Shedd has 40 to 50 fantasy point upside for tournaments. Um, he's okay for cash too, you know, probably a guy that's going to at least get you 30 fantasy points. I mean, he's got elite, uh, an elite steal rate to go along with this high usage and high assist rate. So Jamal Shedd definitely in play. I don't play LJ Cryer because to me, he's just like, he's like this boom bust option and very shot dependent. We, you guys know, I don't like people over 6k that have to make a lot of shots to get there. Um, so LJ Cryer probably crossed off for me. I think Joan Roberts is the most interesting at 6,100. If I knew he was fully healthy um, and going to play and, and the leg wasn't bothering him, I uh, would play 35 minutes. Uh, you know, I, I think that's a – we just don't know because he only played 19 against Longwood, but he put up 15 fantasy points. If he plays 35 minutes against the Aggies, he's going to crush. So, Juwan Roberts, like, I'm, he, he's going to have to play. This is a one-and-done scenario. Um, these guys want to win a national title. So, I'm going to slot Roberts in in the hopes that he doesn't come out with a leg injury. Uh, in the middle of this game. So that's about it on this side, uh, really, as it's been all season, prioritizing Shed and Roberts. I think Damian Dunn, kind of an interesting look if they decide to give him 25 minutes off the bench. The last game here, yeah, plus six um, against San Diego State, 132 implied total. Uh, this is about as stay away as I get. I know we got some call outs for Danny Wolf to go off. He is a, I mean, he's an awesome real life player. Uh, you know, Pulikitis is the one that, uh, Pulikitis, the one that went off against Auburn. And it's a tough matchup. He has to one. He has to guard Jaden Ladee, and two, Jaden Ladee is very strong defensively. And then you also have uh, just the San Diego defensive mindset, tenth in the country. Just doesn't feel like there's going to be a lot of uh, a lot of interest in this game, which makes all these guys. I mean, not even contrarian, like super contrarian. So if you want to pay eighty one hundred for Wolf or sixty nine hundred for Pulikaitis, like go ahead. And if you beat me with that, kind of like the Creighton guys, and Oregon guys yesterday, like you know, I'll just go to bed angry. Um, but not really interested in, in too much on this Yale side. Uh, flipping over to San Diego State side, I think I have slight interest um, in Jaden Ledee, um, just as attorney pivot, uh, contrarian type option. Uh, we know he has 40 plus upside. Um, and then the guys, you know, <laughs> Butler and Tramel, 6,000 and 5,900. I mean, these guys are going to play 30 plus minutes. They're going to take a lot of shots. They have assist rates, they have, you know, decent steal rates. 
Um, it's just this game is just going to be slow. I mean, Yale's 328th in tempo and San Diego State 10th in defensive efficiency. So I just don't know a reason why you want to go to this game when you have the Colorado game. Um, you have, uh, you know, you have the Grand Canyon Alabama game. You have Clemson and Baylor, which neither team a lot of difference. And you have the James Madison value plus the Duke, like 40 minutes for their for their starters. Um, I just I don't know why you'd want to go there other than be contrarian here. So to wrap it up, guys, uh, Mike Witzel saying joining a hair late, just plug in ED and don't think twice about it. Uh, no, I think you have to think twice about it. Um, there's not a lot of value to go with it, but I understand. Like it, it makes complete sense. Like if you want to play Zach ED, I'm never going to tell you not to do it. I always say flip a coin. Uh, I'm more on the 25% side on this one because if you're playing Zach Eady, you're probably playing Jalen Carey, Raekwon Horton, Isaac Johnson, Luke Hunger. Like it's, I get it. He could put up 65 and then one of those guys gives you a, a 10 and you know, you're, you're living life uh, as long as you get the mid mid range solid. But I mean, what happens if he goes for 47? I mean, your line is probably dead in the water. So um yeah, I mean, don't don't cross them off, and but also, yeah, I mean, you can't ignore them, Mike. So I agree with that. Myron saying only SDSU, SDSU I could see myself playing price wise as Butler. Yeah, I mean Butler, like we know he has big game upside for sure. So I could see him having a you know thirty two to thirty four fantasy uh, point type game, but he needs to get some stocks to get there. Mom Rock saying I missed it. Who the plays? Who plays the five uh, for Grand Canyon? So yeah, Grand Canyon. Uh, you know, you want to look at Gabe, uh, Gabe McLaughlin at fifty seven hundred. Uh, he's uh, he's obviously a uh, too cheap. I mean, all these guys, the top three for them, McLaughlin, Harrison, um, and Grant Foster, just too cheap. Like, yeah, I would, I'm trying to get to, and I know most of my builds have McLaughlin and Harrison. It feels uncomfortable with McLaughlin in there because he does have downside compared to the other two guys. Like, the other two guys' floors aren't, aren't quite as bad as McLaughlin's. Um, where you can see Luke War, uh, in there for 5,500 is definitely interesting. Um, Colin Moore at 4,800 is a very nice place. So best cheap guys on JMU, Tristan. Um, yeah, the best cheap guys on JMU. I think there's three of them, um, that we want to look to. Uh, we want to look at Raekwon Horton for 4,000. Uh, we want to look at Jalen Carey for 3,600 and pray that Bakerstaff gets into a little bit of foul trouble, or at least that he does what he does in 14 to 18 minutes. And then Julian Wooden at 4,700. If he's going to play 28 to 30 minutes in this one at 4,700, uh, he has you know four x upside, five x upside at that price tag. So, yeah, I think the key to the slate is playing uh, playing some James Madison value. I don't know that I want to play the the Isaac Johnson against Edie and the Luke Hunger against Donovan Klingon for value. That's kind of scary. Um, in the mid tier, it's just loaded. McLaughlin, Harrison, Mitchell, Ray J. Dennis. Uh, Lampkin, Jawan Roberts is if he plays 35 minutes, is going to absolutely smash. Uh, you know, the guys from uh, from Utah State, Darius Brown, Ian Martinez, uh, Mason Falslev is, is kind of a contrarian tournament side play. Tristan De Silva at 7,100 is a good cash play. Uh, yeah, and then obviously the studs you want to get to, I mean, it's Kolick, uh, probably going to be in 100% of my lineups. Uh, Filipowski's okay. Uh, I just, I'm rather get to Mark Mitchell in that mid tier if I'm paying for Kolek. ED, obviously a stud. Klingon could go for 50 against Northwestern, but that is a slow, slow game. Uh, Ladie and Hall, uh, certainly interesting. Hall, probably more interesting at his price tag at 7,600. And then one of the Alabama guys is probably going to go for 40 plus. Mark Sears or Aaron Estrada. So uh, that'll wrap it up, guys. I've uh, got about uh, 30, 20, 20 minutes till the slate. So, I uh, hope somebody wins the 20K. Uh, me and the Broskies will be back soon. Um, maybe do a recap show tonight, uh, and then we'll probably be back either Wednesday night or uh, Thursday live before lock to uh, to get the second round of games going. So, uh, yeah, thanks for thanks for joining. Again, my name is Mike Holland at MC Holland 34 Follow me on Twitter. And uh, make sure you hit those like and subscribe buttons. We're uh, – we're on our way to 900 subs. Uh, that is uh, that is on our way to a greater goal, which is 1 billion subs. Uh, so that way we can just do this for free. Uh, not for free, but we can just do this uh, for a living. We'd love to do that. Mike jumping in here saying thanks, Mike. I appreciate it. Hope everyone has a good day. And uh, why, don't we, uh, why don't we do the thing that Jay and Eric always like to say? And let's get this bread. 
Thanks for stopping by the office. Get your fantasy prescription by subscribing to the channel and checking out drrodo.com. And until the next visit, be well and take care.